Good morning, and welcome to Online Church this morning. We're glad that you've taken the time to tune in, and we encourage you to participate as we worship the Lord together today. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice, and we should be glad in it. Pastor Foster is my name, and I'm the senior pastor here at SBC, along with our staff and congregation. We welcome you to our service this morning. A little later on, I'm going to be sharing the word. My wife, Pastor Kim, is going to come in a little while along with our team and lead us in some worship this morning. We encourage you to stay focused. We encourage you to sing along and participate in worship this morning. In a little while, we're going to hear from one of our home missionaries, uh, Pastor Sean and Trista Bailey in Cornerstone, and we'll introduce them in a little, a little bit. And, and overseas, we're going to hear from a song from uh, a missionary, Marilyn Curtis in the Philippines, and some of the girls that she works with. So we're going to have a good time together this morning. The scriptures are going to be read, and we're going to worship God together. We are entered into level two now under our pandemic and health crisis, and there have been some restrictions lifted, and uh, we are navigating our way forward during this time. We're asking for your prayers and support as we move together. Uh, we are yet to be determined if we will be entering in our, in our building again for, uh, for public worship times. We're consulting and looking at the restrictions that are there and wondering if we are able to go ahead with that. And we're also examining the possibility of drive-in services. And so we'll be having more to say about that in the days and weeks ahead. And we're asking the Lord for His wisdom, and we're asking for your patience. All of us need to be patient together. God is sovereign, God is in control, and we're trusting the Lord. This coming Sunday, there will be no inside service, and there will be no open-air service this evening. So we know that we, uh, as we go forward, as I said, we'll make more clear announcements along this line. So thank you, God bless you, and let's enjoy our time of worship together this morning. Good morning, and uh, we're so glad that you're able to worship with us this morning here, and I have a great team that will help me this morning, and we're going to start off with a song, Not Afraid. I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God.
afraid because he stands with us. keeper and we don't feel it a lot of times but he's still working and he is moving in our midst and he never stops he never stops working we're going to sing a song called Lord I need you next Lord I You're the 
Thank you, Pastor Kim and worship team for leading us in worship this morning. Beautiful songs. It's great to be able to worship the Lord together. And we're encouraging you to sing at home and to worship God. We're encouraging you to stay focused throughout the service. Oftentimes in an online experience, people are tempted to flick and change from one uh, deliverance to another and one station to another. But let's stay focused. And I'm speaking directly to my congregation here all this morning. We need to focus together and worship together. We do, uh, we do a number of uh, overseas missions works and home missions works here at SPC. We're a big missions church, and thank you for your giving. Thank you for your contributions. Many of you are so faithful in this area, and we have not missed anything with regards to our home and foreign missions uh, uh, commitments. If you want to continue to give online, sbcoffering at gmail.com is our email address and of course our office is open uh, over the next couple of weeks the office hours will be 10 to 3 and so we encourage you to drop in uh, Sean and Trista Bailey uh, are our own missions pastors in Cornerstone downtown St. John's and we support their ministry and some of you might remember Trista Trista Gray she used to be she did her internship here at SBC a lot of years ago now so they and their family are ministering downtown St. John's so this morning via video, uh, they, have, they want to bring us a brief little greeting and give us a little quick run through of their ministry downtown. Some of you have never been there on Ricketts Road, our ministry center in downtown St. John's. Some of you may have been there, but this morning virtually you're going to have a little visit. After they give us a little rundown of their ministry, our overseas missionaries, uh, you, we all know Marilyn Curtis, some of us know Marilyn, uh, from our assembly here, ministers in Manila. And over the last number of months, uh, Marilyn has been getting some of her congregation together and some of uh, the folks that she works with and been sharing some songs and greetings and exhortations with us. So some of the children are going to do a song for us after the Baileys bring us a greeting. So God bless you. Hello, everyone in Springdale. We are the Bailey family and we are the lead pastors at Cornerstone Ministry Center here in St. John's. Just wanted to take this opportunity to say hello, to introduce ourselves to you. Uh, my name is Sean, and off to my left is my wife. 
Hi, I'm Trista, and this is our youngest one son, Daniel, and our girls. Madeline. Hi, my name is Madeline, and I'm eight years old, soon to be nine, and I love helping her at Supper Bowl. And this right here is? Emily, and I'm soon to be six, and right now I am five, and I like helping her at um, as you can see, we are quite busy here at home, especially with our youngest, Daniel, and uh, he's definitely not going to make it through the full video, so I'm going to take over and I'm going to take you guys to a quick walkthrough of the building downtown. Well, here we are downtown uh, on 13 Ricketts Road, uh, right across from St. Clair's Hospital, and this is where uh, we do much of the ministry uh, here at Cornerstone. Uh, what you see behind me, the main door is just off, off to about that direction there. And when you come in, what you're looking at behind me is where we hold Coffee House. Uh, Coffee House is a ministry that we run every Friday night uh, from about 7 to 10. And it's sort of a drop-in ministry where we serve coffee, uh, tea, hot chocolate, uh, a light snack. And uh, we allow it to be a third space. We allow it to be a place where people can come. Uh, and just hang out and it allows us as the volunteers to be able to build a relationship uh, To be able to pray one for another and to be able to just uh, Be a blessing in a very practical and tangible way whether that be give them something to eat or whether that be just a, a listening ear and a friend and so this is something that uh, I'm very passionate about very excited about I love coming down on Friday nights and uh, as you can imagine with the current pandemic realities uh, We're not able to do that uh, but typically, this is what you would see on a Friday night, and uh, we would get anywhere from 30 to 50 people come and go through the night, and uh, it's a fantastic ministry that has allowed us to build some wonderful relationships and to have some positive influence in the lives of folks down here. Now, what you see behind me here, this is our main sanctuary. It is directly opposite what you just saw, the coffee house area. Um, right now our sanctuary is bare uh, because the last time we used this was on a Saturday night. Saturday nights we run Supper Bowl. Um, we get anywhere from 60 upwards to 100 people come through on a Saturday night. Um, various churches throughout the Avalon region, they partner with us, they come in, they bring in a meal, they serve it. And, uh, and so what happens is on Saturday night when Supper Bowl is done, we pack up all the tables and chairs uh, and then all the chairs you see over in the corner, they get set out and then we use the same space as our sanctuary for Sunday morning service. And so this is, a, again, it's a multi-purpose space and uh, what we are trying to do here is we're trying to simply be uh, a very practical uh, presence in people's lives and so by simply feeding those who may be hungry uh, by being someone that is there for someone who just needs a friend uh, or someone to pray for uh, this has provided us super cool opportunities uh, I've only been here for a few short months and uh, I've had the privilege to build some wonderful relationships friendships with some of the folks that uh, we get to see week in and week out now, we are up on the upper level, and what you see behind me uh, is a upper floor with uh, space that uh, we actually don't have, uh, haven't been able to utilize in my few months that are here. Uh, directly in front of me, we have a couple of Sunday school rooms. Uh, this is where we do our Tuesday night prayer meetings. Uh, some of our offices are off in that direction. We have another small kitchen, and as you can see, it's just wide open space. And so the possibilities really are endless. And I, it's, it's at this point, really, I'd like to be able to say to all of you folks in Springdale and wherever you may be tuning in from, uh, but for you folks in Springdale, your missions giving uh, enables us to do ministry. Uh, it enables us to do things like coffee house and supper bowl. Uh, it enables us to do the one-on-one -on -one kind of ministry to be able to meet practical needs in people's lives. And so I just want to say thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and your giving. We are living in uncertain times and uh, I pray God's blessing upon you as you continue to, to give. And uh, please know uh, that this is some of what your missions dollars are going to. Uh, we are living, as I said, in uncertain days. We're not able to run Coffee House and Supper Bowl as usual. And so we are exploring alternative ways uh, to be Jesus to the people that we minister to. And so we're actually in the process of preparing care bags. 
uh, and to be able to drop off to some of the folks that may be in need and just to be a blessing to our community around us. So again, thank you so much for your giving. I pray God's blessing upon you. church family. Uh, our family is here this morning to do a prayer and a reading from uh, 1 John 2 verses 1 to 11 if you want to prepare. Uh, we just want to say that we miss our church family and we can't wait till we can get back into the church and to uh, meet with everyone again. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the deadness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister is in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going, because the darkness has blinded them. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, we give you thanks today that uh, we can come into your presence and we can give you thanks for this day that you've given us uh, for health. And even though uh, some people are, you know, experiencing anxiety through this time of uh, the COVID-19, uh, we pray your strength upon uh, the members of our community. Uh, we pray that uh, the community members who are looking to us for strength that you know we may be able to offer a kind word or a word of support uh, at this time i also pray lord uh, for the sick among our community lord uh, a friend of us just diagnosed with cancer that's going for treatment this week and lord we pray that your hand would be beyond that person beyond every person within our community dear lord that needs your hand that needs your guidance at this time uh, we pray your your hand upon our pastors uh, church is different at this time but we're thankful that we can still do virtual church 
and we pray that your hands will be beyond up our upon our pastors uh, protect them lord keep them strong in this time uh, give them the words and the wisdom uh, that they need to guide the flock and lord we just pray that your protection and your blessings would be uh, would continue to be upon us at this time and we give you thanks for everything that we have in your name amen, amen. thank you andrew's family for reading the scripture praying and thank you for everybody for your involvement in this service this morning i want to send out a large bouquet again to all of our uh, folks who volunteer and who come alongside and help with the production of our online services. Uh, we really appreciate your willingness to be involved. Throughout this pandemic and throughout these uh, times of uh, being separated, we've had a lot of different members of our congregation involved in ministry, and everybody has done so with a willing heart, and we appreciate that. Appreciate Pastor Blair and all the hard work that he puts into our our video production and the other things that he does along the side uh, that are not directly connected even with the youth ministry that he's discharging on a regular basis. We appreciate that and we thank him sincerely. All of our staff is so, so wonderful to work with and we thank you for your help. And our church board, I want to say a thank you to our church board for their support and their prayers and their wise advice during these times of difficulty. We are trusting the Lord. And we're moving forward together. I want to take a few moments uh, to share some thoughts from God's Word with you this morning. And if we can turn in our Bibles to the scripture that was just read. And it is uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2. And uh, verse 1 to 11 was read. And as a text this morning, I want to take verse 3 and 4. And the Bible says, And hereby do we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He hath said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. John, of course, is the writer of this book of 1 John. He wrote the Gospel of John. He wrote 1 and 2 and 3 John, and also the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was written while he was on the Isle of Patmos in exile. Uh, 1 John was written as an aged pastor in Ephesus. And history tells us John was quite old when he wrote this uh, passage of Scripture. Several times he refers to his congregation as little children. And so when you're up in your 90s, possibly, and, or late 80s, everybody seems to be like a little child. So John was quite aged and quite, quite experienced. And here he's giving some practical instruction to his congregation. John understood the fact that the Word of God is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. And as we follow God's word, we receive instruction for life and we are given a road to walk on as we develop our Christian faith and as we are discipled and walk in the, in the blessing and the goodness of God. Here John is talking about uh, being aware of a profession of faith that is not followed up with practice. Of a profession of faith that's not followed up with practice. You've all heard the old adage, we should practice what we preach. <laughs> and really, this is what John is saying here in its really base form and, and really boiled right down to the brass tacks, if you want to use that language. John is saying we should practice what we preach. Now, we all know that's not easy. That's not always easy. It's difficulty and challenges that come along with that. And just a few moments ago, I had someone in my office, and they were talking about the things that they want to do, they don't always do, and the things that they don't want to do, they find themselves falling into those traps all the time. Most of us are there. And so that's why we need an encouragement from God's Word to do exactly what John is saying here to his congregation. We should practice what we preach. I heard someone say one time, and they were giving some advice to one of their children. I heard this uh, live. I listened to the conversation. And they were telling their children to do a certain thing. And the child said, but dad, you don't do that. You don't do it, so why should I have to do it? And the dad came back and he said something that I'll never forget. He said, well, you do as I say, not as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. That doesn't work. It doesn't work with families. It doesn't work with children. And it doesn't work with our Christian faith. And uh, we should indeed do as John tells us. We should practice what we preach. Our profession of faith, if it doesn't produce a practice, can become hypocritical. We can become hypocrites. 
Most of us are very good at applying this test to other people. We examine their lives to see if we can find fault in their commitments. And we're very good to point fingers at other people when we do see those little holes in their faith and see those little faults. And when things don't turn out the way we think they should turn out, we should say, look at that person. They're, they're an hypocrite, sure. I can't go to church. I can't be a part of that church because they're hypocrites. They don't practice what they preach all the time. Well, John is not saying here to look at somebody else. John is not saying examine the person in the pew next to you or in the house across the street or up the road. John is not saying that here. John here is not suggesting that we apply this test to others. Rather, he is giving us a checklist whereby we can test the genuineness of our own faith and the genuineness of our own relationship with God. He is warning us against the perils of self-deception. Here John is addressing our walk with the Master. He is speaking about our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, which is the most important relationship anybody can have. The most important relationship you can have is your relationship with Jesus Christ. He would save us from the great disappointment of spending eternity separated from God, as any good pastor would want to do to his congregation. He would save us from the disappointment of spending eternity separated from God because we did not practice what we preached. We did not do as we said we would do. The unbelieving world has no confidence, has no confidence in a profession of religion that doesn't end in an accurate practice of it. The unbelieving world will find that distasteful and will be treated with disdain. C.H. Spurgeon, great preacher of yesterday, much quoted in our circles, and Spurgeon was a master of words and eloquent beyond the pulpit, pastored a large church in London back in the 1800s, and was published, his sermons were published every week in the newspaper, and droves of people would line up to hear him preach, and there would be waiting lines outside. Spurgeon said, sermons that walk around in shoes and express themselves in action are far more convincing than those who are preached with words. Sermons that walk around in shoes. And I think that's a great illustration for us to have in our minds. That's what God wants us all to be. Sermons that walk around in shoes. A profession of faith is essential. A profession of faith is absolutely essential. By a profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, we identify ourselves as believers. We identify ourselves as Christians through our profession of faith. I am a Christian. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that He is the Son of God. I believe that He was born of a woman. I believe He fulfills the prophecy that was uttered in the first chapters of Genesis when it said, the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head. I believe that He died. I believe that He rose again. I believe that He is coming back. These are all professions of our faith. We commit ourselves to Jesus, and we separate ourselves from beliefs and practices that are not congruent with his teachings. We take a stand with God and declare our intention to follow his path and to follow his will. And the importance of our profession is seen in the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 10. And maybe you want to turn there in your Bibles if you have your Bibles open. Verse 32 and verse 33, powerful scripture. It says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. This is a strong scripture. If we acknowledge Jesus, he will acknowledge us. If we deny him, the Bible says, he will deny us. Some people teach erroneously in universal salvation that everybody will be saved. That is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whoever acknowledges Jesus Christ, they will be saved. Jesus is the only way to God, the only mediator between God and man. So the profession of our faith is so important. Our Lord also spoke concerning the worthiness of a profession of faith. 
one that is empty and one that is superficial and does not lead to fulfilling the will of God will be identified and will be judged by God. The Bible says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 21 and 23, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? Have I not cast out devils in thy name and done many wonderful works? And they will profess unto them. And yet, the Bible says, the Lord will say unto them, Depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So it's not enough just to give it lip service. There's got to be more to our profession of faith than just lip service. There must be a following up of our profession of faith with action. The Lord demands from me and he demands from you more than lip service, but there must be a profession. We must start with a profession of faith. There's, there's also a practice of our profession. There's a practice of our, our profession. John encourages his readers to place great faith in their profession, providing it is followed up with practice. Providing it's followed up with practice. And John gives, in this scripture, John gives two main reasons and two main areas, rather, that we can follow up our profession of faith. Number one, he talks about keeping the commands of God. And then number two, he talks about loving our brothers and sisters. Let's talk about keeping the commands of God for a second. We follow up the profession of our faith with practice by keeping the commands of God. In this great epistle, there's emphasis placed on the significance of a deep inward desire to obey the commands of God. The word command appears 14 times in these five short chapters. John insists that you can test the genuineness of your faith and your profession of faith by, uh, by the practice and the outworking of your faith. A living relationship with God touches every aspect of our lives. And our hearts will have a sincere and a deep desire to do the will of God and to follow His commandments. We should give more serious and prayerful consideration to walking in the paths of righteousness and keeping the commands of God. The Word of God is not given to us. The Bible is not given to us to just be a nice book to sit on a shelf. It's not given to us just to collect dust and to have there to, a, as a piece on our mantle. The Word of God is given to us so that we might read it, so that we might understand it, so that may, we might walk in the precepts that are outlined in the Word of God. And we might show then a genuine profession of our faith by our desire to fulfill and to walk in the commands of the Lord. The commandments of God are revelations. The revelation of the great spiritual and moral principles that undergird the universe itself. The Word of God is not given to us, and the commands of God are not given to us just to overlord us and just to make sure that we stay in a certain vein or in a certain place. They're given to us so that we might walk in them and have life and have it more abundantly. The person who ignores the Word of God the person who ignores the will of God and violates or transgresses the commands of God does so at their own peril. They do so at their own peril. And the Bible says, folks, listen. The Bible says those who disobey the will of God and disobey the commands of God, their chief, their end will be destruction. Their end will be destruction. We live in a world today where uh, some folks are, are, are teaching universal salvation. Some folks are teaching that everybody will be saved. Everybody will be saved. Folks, I want to be very clear this morning. Only those who call upon the name of the Lord and only those who walk in the will of God, who walk in the freedom of the will of God and walk in connection with the Spirit, those, feet, those folks will have genuine faith and those folks will one day stand before the Lord. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not talking about your own robes of righteousness. I'm, I believe in grace. I believe in salvation through grace in Jesus Christ. I believe that fully. I know the Bible teaches that, and we all say amen to that. But there is clear instruction in the Word of God that we are to walk in the will of the Lord, that we are to walk in the commands of the Lord. John gave it to his church in Ephesus, and we need to give it to our churches. Bible teacher Charles Stanley says this. This is a great quote. 
Charles Stanley, many of you listened to him on television and on radio for many years, quite aged now, but a consistent teacher of the Scripture for decades. To be disobedient, he says, to the laws of God will bring destruction in the realm of the Spirit, comparable to the destruction wrought in physical life when one ignores the laws of gravity and jumps off a cliff. Any of you who are sound-thinking individuals today, you know that if you climb to the top of Boyle's Hill and you go up to the edge of the cliff there and, and, and you look out over and you find a, a place where it's, it's leaning out over and the drop maybe is 100, 150 feet down or, or even further than that into trees and rocks and shrubs and stones, and you know that if you jump off there, gravity says you're going to fall down. There's a law that goes along with that and you don't do it. You don't do it. What is a law that goes along with the things of God, the precepts of God's Word? If we ignore God's Word, if we ignore His law, if we ignore God's commands with regards to marriage, with, with regards to sexuality, with regards to ethics, if we ignore these things, the end is destruction. The end is destruction. There is no other way. Now, also John talks about not just keeping the commands of God. John says here, you'll also uh, practice your faith by loving your brothers and sisters. This entire epistle that John writes here places emphasis on giving expression of our faith in genuine love for our brothers and sisters. One who makes a profession of knowing Jesus Christ but does not practice love, John says in chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, is self-deceived. That person is self-deceived. You think you can be a Christian? You think you can serve the Lord and not love your brother and sister? John says, you are deceived. You are deceived. The Bible calls us and tells us and instructs us and commands us to love one another. And if I can give you a piece of advice this morning to help you during not only these seasons of challenge and difficulty, but all through our lives, love people. Love people. Be gracious to them. Forgive them. Know that we're all frail children of dust, feeble and frail. And forgive one another. Forgive one another. Love one another. Love for our brothers and sisters is not limited to just a vocal expression of affection. Anybody can do that. Anybody can say, I love you. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But John here is talking about a practical demonstration of love that comes out in benevolent care on the part of the one who is making that profession. Practice what we preach. Practice what we preach. He advises that we re-examine our faith. We re-examine our walk with God. And it is not just a, an expression, but it's a practical outworking of what we say we are. And these practical outworkings, John says, are, are expressed in mercy towards the unfortunate. And we minister in outreach. We minister in care. We minister by feeding the hungry. We minister by clothing the naked. We minister by going alongside those who are disenfranchised and those who are hurting and showing love and grace. The ministry that we highlighted a few moments ago in downtown St. John's. We've been down there for many years now. And the Baileys follow suit after many leaders and over, over the years. And I've had the privilege of being a part of that ministry in downtown St. John's. It's about helping the poor. It's about helping those who need help. It's about showing Jesus to those who don't see him in any other place. Same thing with our overseas missions department. And our church, we need to be about that kind of a ministry. We need to be about it not just in the Philippines, not just in downtown St. John's, but right here in Springdale. Right here in Springdale. And let's challenge one another. And let's challenge ourselves personally to practice what we preach. In the, if the absence of a social and economic expression of our professional faith will indicate that we are indeed self-deceived and in danger of entering eternity without the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So in conclusion this morning, we need to put into practice what we learn. Put into practice what we learn. Some of us have been going to church a long time. Some of you have been going to church for 50 years. And now you wish you could get back in church. And I wish I could be here this morning again with my congregation. But let me tell you something right now. We have received the Word of God. We have received the teachings of God's Word. And we have the opportunity to go out and to minister to others today. Is your profession of faith a profession that proves itself in its practice? Are you living 
Are you a living, walking, serving sermon? Does your walk match your word? If so, rejoice and praise God. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, take a little bit of time to sit back and examine our lives today. Not examine your brother or sister. Not examine someone across the street or across the pew, but have a look at the person in the mirror. And I'm quoting that old Michael Jackson song. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him or her to change his ways. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the strength to practice what I preach. Give me the grace and strength to walk in the will of God. And give me the grace and strength to love my fellow brothers and sisters. We're going to conclude our broadcast with a song. Before we do that, I want to lead you in a prayer. Praise the Lord. Everybody is saying the same, same law. You know, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. We'll get through it. With, together we're stronger. That's a great line. Together we're stronger. We're in this together. But as a minister of the gospel, I want to say this morning, not only are we in this together, but God is our captain. God is our chief orchestrator. He's the conductor. And we're in this with him. And he's in it with us. This is not something that we should be taken uh, back by or surprised by. This is all part of, of the end time plans. And so we're trusting God as these things and these seasons unfold. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Jesus could come at any time. Before I finish my prayer, he could come. We need to be ready. We need to be ready today. If you don't know him as your personal Savior, accept him today. Accept him as your personal Savior. Acknowledge your sin. Ask Jesus Christ into your heart and purpose to do the will of God and to love one another today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege of coming together. And this morning, we just pray one for another. As we hear your word, we know it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we ask today, Lord, that you would help us to walk in the precepts of your word. We pray, Lord, that you would give us courage as we go forward. We want to trust you. And for those who don't know you, Lord, today we pray for their salvation. We ask, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom to walk in the will of God. And as we go forward now into the next season, Lord, level two, and we begin open air services over, over this summer, we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Our words can be shared and songs can be shared. But unless the Holy Spirit touches them and brings life to them and touches the hearts of individuals, we know, Lord, that it's not going to be as effective as we would want it to be. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in Springdale. You're welcome in Beachside. You're welcome in our communities. All of our communities around our province, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Come and minister. Give wisdom to our authorities. Give wisdom to those who govern us. Grant us, Lord, the patience and courage to continue serving you in these dark and difficult days. And we pray it together in Christ's name. And all of us said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. The next song we're going to do is a song called He is All I Need. He is all I need. He is all
when I go out for a walk and uh, there are those mornings that I go out and the rain has fallen the night before and when the rain has fallen the earth is that much richer and the smell in the air is that much stronger and that's what happens when Jesus comes in and he breathes his rain upon us our lives are affected and it becomes that much stronger and that much better and he makes it that much richer and he renews and that's what he does for us he renews our soul let's sing that song one more time Yeah. 